Amen. Um, I don't know, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, depending on your time zone. Um, I don't want to take this lightly, this uh, leadership uh, retreat. Uh, I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord, Evangelist Mike Bamiloye, uh, Mommy Gloria Bamiloye, the Executive of Manzan Institute Alumni Fellowship. I appreciate Pastor Dari Jeremiah, appreciate Pastor Badru. I appreciate my sister that has been coordinating this evening. Appreciate Stabola Olaogun for that worship. Thank God for Evangelia Dukusibe who led the prayers. Thank God for all the executives working behind the scene, people like uh, Jai and the rest of them. The Lord bless all of us. Um, thank God for this concept the Lord's doing for leaders. Um, can we have a word of prayer, please? Father, we want to thank you because in you we move, we live, and have our being. The word says, by the grace of God, we are what we are. We thank you, Lord. I ask, O oh Lord, that you breathe on this short exhortation. Let the words of my mouth and the, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, of my salvation. I stand aside and ask you to take all the glory. Let all the honor and adoration be unto you. Increase that I might decrease. Breathe on everything we shall do, and your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, once again, um, I want to appreciate everyone. Uh, from all, all over the world, when you're watching this uh, wonderful uh, leadership training program. Now we're sharing, uh, since we are talking to leaders and coordinators, I'll be sharing one of the most, one of the critical ingredients of leadership, which is inevitable. It's an inevitable quality. We'll be talking about the spirit of patience, which is critical in leadership. Whatever capacity you are leading, even as an husband in the house, you are leading them, you are leading certain men, number of people. You are leading your wife, you are leading your children. You are an house fellowship leader, you are a drama leader, especially in the drama ministry. Whichever ministry you find yourself as a leader, this is a very critical ingredient in life. Now, what is patience? Let me see if someone is patient. What is it? Because they are dealing with human beings of various temperaments, they are dealing with human beings of various makeup people of different backgrounds, people of different natures. So you are dealing with them as a leader. One of the things that causes a lot of problems is an inability for some leaders are not that patient. You know, let's look at the definition of patience. It says the capacity to assailants or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Look at, it's the capacity that may, or the ability to accept. Look at that word, accept or tolerate. Delay, problems, suffering, without becoming annoyed or anxious. Now, this is critical in leadership. Tolerance, ability to tolerate. It's a critical uh, ingredient, which you can succeed as a leader if you are not patient. You need patience. This is very critical. If you look at the, if you break down the definition, make tolerance is one. Number two, uh, it says accepting what you are passing through without being annoyed or being anxious. Another, time, another one says ability or willingness to suppress restlessness or annoyance. Patience with a slow learner, that takes a lot of tolerance. Some people are very, very slow. You need to see what you are saying five, 10 times before they grab what you are saying. You have to understand that not if you are a very fast person, you are very intelligent, you are very brilliant. You don't think that everyone in your group or who you are coordinating is on the same level with you. You must learn to, 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 to accommodate everyone. You have to be tolerant. The third one says ability to remain calm when dealing with a difficult person or a difficult situation. Whether you like it or not in leadership, you are going to come across difficult people, people that are difficult to handle. And you have to be patient with them because they are an asset to your ministry. They are useful to you, but they have this issue. They have this issue. Probably, probably have one problem or the other in their lives. You need to be patient with them. Let's look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Analyze the life of those 12 disciples. Out of them was Peter. Peter that Jesus said that you, Upon you, upon thee, I will build my, I will build my rock, my church, and the gate of hell cannot prevail against you. This said, Peter took a sword and cut the eye ear of someone, and Jesus picked it up. That was the manifestation of the spirit of anger. Out of the disciples of Jesus was another case called Doubtful Thomas. Thomas, 
after Jesus has told them that I'm going to die, I'm going to, I'm going to resurrect, and after saying all that, after the resurrection, Thomas he told Jesus, he said, show me thy hand. And I, I, I wonder many leaders have that patience. He has, he has spoken to them, he has done all that. Thomas told him, say, show me thy hand. And he showed him the left hand. He said, right, show me the right one. And he showed him the right hand. I said, the minister was picturing that situation. He said, all right, I'm through with the right hand. I'm through with the left hand. Can I see your side? He also wrote, showed him the side. He put, touched it. Do you understand? Look at that kind of patience as a leader. Dealing with doubtful followers. Followers who, who are not so quick to understand. That's by what you are saying. They are still going to question you. In 2 Peter chapter 3, you see here that they think of our Lord Jesus, the patience of our Lord Jesus Christ, an opportunity for us to be saved. The patience of our Lord Jesus Christ is a perfect example of someone who is patient. In the book of John chapter 14, when Jesus was telling them, he says, I am the, he says, be not alone, let your heart be troubled. Believe in the Father and believe in me. In my house, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If not so, I wouldn't have said this to you. I go to prepare a place for you. And then as he proceeded in John chapter 14, he got to the point. Philip said, show us the Father, and it shall be sufficient unto us. And Philip said, and Jesus said to him, he said, ah, since I've been with you for so long, yet you're asking me, Philip, show me the Father. Can you imagine? Some people are following him, and they don't still know who he was. So some of us will be annoyed, we'll be, we'll be angry. We'll be like, ah, what kind of people am I, am I breathing? Look at these people. But Jesus took his time. He explained. He explained. He was so patient with those disciples. Out of the 12 disciples was Boanerges, son of thunder, that told Jesus that, look, let us call down thunder from heaven. And Jesus told them, look, you don't know the kind of spirit that is in you. And if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, this is another, another example of Apostle Paul. He says, but you know all about my teachings, my way of life, my purpose, my faith. And he finally said, my patience. Paul, as an, as, as a, as a, as an apostle, he says, fully, you fully know my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, long suffering, love, and patience. Think it was the book of Ephesians. It says, for bearing one another, in love. Another patient leader was King David. King David went his, family, his wife and children and all the wives and children of his soldiers were taken away. Bible said the, 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 the soldiers wept and wept until there was no strength in them. And Bible said the people thought of stoning David. Bible now said to us that David encouraged himself. And they went to battle and they recovered all. But before they went to battle, the scripture told us that some of these, some of his soldiers were weary because of what they passed through. And they said, well, we don't have the strength. We have been demoralized. We have been incapacitated. We have been bewildered. We don't have the strength to fight. And there is no problem, stay. Bible said he took the strong ones, they went to battle, and they came back with spoil. Watch what the scripture said. He said some children of Belial told David that he shouldn't share the spoil in the same proportion. That means those of us that went to war must have a higher portion than those that sat behind. But David, as a patient leader, he knew that these were the same guys that we used to fight together. These are the same guys that we have won many battles together. The fact that they can't go today, they will go tomorrow. He was a patient leader. He was patient and he was understanding. He was patient and he was understanding. That was a, that was a perfect example. Look at what happened between Elisha and Elijah. Elisha was a very patient servant leader. That's what is missing today in the body of Christ. People are not patient to serve under people anymore. They are not patient to serve under people. You want to lead, but you don't want to be led. When Elijah told Elisha, I said, stay there, I'm going to, he said, I'm going to Jericho, I'm going to follow you. Say, stay there, I said, I'm going to follow you. He was patiently following that man. 
But from research, it shows that Elisha was more older than Elijah in age. But they, may, they are not they, they, the grace of God upon Elijah was more on that of than that of Elisha. Bible said they followed him patiently. Jericho on mentions to us in Romans twelve says patient in tribulation. As a leader, you need to be patient. A lot of leaders are not patient with, with, with those that are following them. They are not patient in decision making. You need to be very careful as a leader. One of the ingredients you need, you need to be patient. But he says, either believing must not make haste. You, must, you need to be patient. But the others will be going, taking decisions, make you going ahead of you, moving ahead. God says, wait, wait. The Bible says that that of the fourth stage, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He shall mount up with wings as eagles. He shall run and not be weary. He shall walk and not faint. Look at what the book of Proverbs 25, 15 says. He said, with patience, you can persuade a ruler. And a soft tongue can break a bone. Another decision says, patience can persuade the prince. That means, with patience, you can do a lot. The opposite of being patient is being hasty. A lot of people are in haste. If you look at the issue, look at what happened between Kush and the other guy. That one said, I'm running. What are you, what? He was running, but he had no message. Other, when he got to the front of David, <laughs> David asked him, what message do you have? The guy was babbling. A lot of people are running ahead of their time. They are not patient. You have to be patient. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, patience persuades. That means it can persuade a prince if you have been patient. So, as a leader, you will need to ask for the spirit of patience. Hebrews 12, 1. He says, looking unto Jesus, said, running the race, running with patience, the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith, of our faith who endured such much. Say, let us run with what? With patience. The crux of Christianity has to do with patience, endurance, tolerance. The major problem people have, they can't tolerate. They are very fast. Once they see a slow person, they can't, they can't cope with a slow person. They can read 10,000 scriptures at once, but they can't cope with somebody who cannot read too. A good leader must always look behind and check, and check, like a sheep. If one sheep is low, you need to look back and look for that sheep and carry him along. David was a fantastic leader. The Bible said there were vagabonds, there were beggars, there were debtors that was with David. The beauty of leadership is, is the ability to bring out something out of nothing. You are not dwelling on the weakness of the individual. You are turning his weakness to strength. You are not using his weakness as a point of torment, but you have the, the ability to turn the weakness of that person and make a champion out of him. Out of those debtors, by the wisdom and the spirit of patience in David, these people became mighty soldiers, which he used. That is resourcefulness, the ability to see deeper, seeing beyond the weakness of those people and seeing strength in them. And this happens when you are patient with someone. When you are patient with someone, when you are processing a raw material to, to a real material, it involves patience. Before gold was transformed to, to, to its real material, for its real state, it went through fire. And that involves patience. So I want to encourage us in this retreat, training us as leaders. If our Lord Jesus was patient, in the, in, we saw it in the New Testament. We saw the life of David. He was a patient leader. We saw, leader, we saw I mean, patience also in the life of Elisha. I want to encourage us as we go, in, go along in our life and our ministries, we need to be patient. One of the things, one of the things I learned from my father in the Lord, that is my family, he is my role model in, in movie direct. One, one critical nature I saw in him is the spirit of patience. We don't believe we are shooting a film one day. A cast, we took takes 17 over one cast. And the man kept saying, you will get this line. Don't worry. He kept encouraging. So many directors will have flared up, saying no mind of unprintable words because they couldn't tolerate that person. His patience, go and check Galatians chapter 5. It's one of the fruit of the spirit. If you are not patient, it's of the Holy Spirit to give us that spirit. You don't have an option. We need, it's a fruit of the spirit. 
Patience shows that the Holy Spirit, the fruit that is manifesting. If you are so hasty, if you are so temperamental, you just say any word to anyone, you can't endure. The guy didn't get the line. You're not patient with him. You're just saying things. You're just hurting people, throwing stones at them. Excuse me. Are you a leader or you are a boss? A boss can see anything. God don't, didn't raise us to become boss. He raised us to become leader. Jesus was never a boss. He was a leader. As I round up this, this afternoon, I want to pray that the Lord will send the spirit of patience into our lives. You can't have enough of patience. The more of the Holy Spirit you have, more, you have in you, the more of patience that is manifesting in you. Look at our fathers in faith. Look at how are they, they been able to cope with all manner of characters in their leadership, in their leadership kitchen. All manner of characters among those. That, but the ability to manage these people and take them forward. Jesus is enduring us, he's loving us, enduring all our nature. Even in the home, we need patience with one another. And I pray for you this afternoon, wherever you are in, 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 in a part of the world, that the spirit of patience will come upon us afresh. And if we have been manifesting it before, I pray for more of it in our lives. Shall we pray together? Ancient of days, we want to thank you for this time together. I will say the entrance of your word, give it light and understanding to the simple. So how does a young man cleanse his ways? I take it that to your word. Your word, the Bible says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word has become a light unto us. Father, let this word we've had mixed with faith in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for, for fresh infilling of the spirit of patience. That it will manifest in a greater dimension from this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you all the glory, give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.